Hello, my name is Max Caddis. There's a Samsung ad out at the moment. It shows an ostrich who dreams of flying. Of course, an ostrich can't fly with or without VR flying lessons. To me, it is a metaphor for breaking down the barriers which exist within you. For the ostrich who has wings without the capacity to fly, this is a physical barrier. For me, doing what I can't is breaking down the barrier within my brain to make connections and pathways that are not easily accessible. What happens when you have to do what you can't? When I started school, I was presented with my first reading book. My teacher thought I was ready, but I did not. The day I took that book home, it took me four hours to read four pages with every single distraction tactic I knew. Crying, pretending I needed the toilet. It was not fun. At school, whenever there was English, instead of taking part, I took cardboard boxes and built something. By the end of my reception year, I hadn't learnt to read, but I had engineered a fantastic ambulance complete with yellow and green tissue paper squares and a flashing light. My teachers failed to notice my dyslexia. To be fair to them, I now know that it is very hard to diagnose until somebody reaches the age of nine. But when you are seven year old and the expectation is that the whole class can read, that is a fact that is not very helpful. So when I was seven and in year two, I dreaded being made to stand up in front of the class and read something out. It was my idea of hell. Whenever the teacher turned her back, everybody would snigger at me. And one day when she walked out of the classroom, everybody burst out laughing. I couldn't read, let alone out loud. But they made me do it anyway. I moved schools. A new teacher noticed I was struggling and referred me to an educational psychologist who diagnosed me with severe dyslexia. When I was given the diagnosis, the relief was immense. The first words I said were, Thank goodness, now I know I'm not stupid. Now I'm 12, I can, of course, read and write. As you would expect for dyslexic, my spelling is atrocious, and what they call my processing speed is really slow. Diagnosis is not a cure, but at least it opened the doors to understanding the barriers within my own brain and I could begin to find ways to overcome them. And I have to face the fact that although I feel pretty comfortable speaking, I also need to read and write and do it well. I started to research dyslexia. I am fascinated by science and by ideas. And I discovered I was in great company. A whole plethora of the world-renowned figures from history, including Albert Einstein, Winston Churchill, Hans Christian Andersen, and possibly even Leonardo da Vinci, were dyslexic. Entrepreneur Richard Branson is dyslexic, but this has not limited his ability to be successful in life. And if Einstein, whose name is practically synonymous with genius, has dyslexia, surely it's not a limiting factor in intelligence. During the development of the brain, it is thought neurons compete with each other for connections. So it's a sort of race. Sometimes the cells good at reading connect better, but sometimes it's the cells that are good at spatial imagining that makes most of the connections. And after all, Da Vinci, Branson, Einstein and Churchill turned out to be pretty good at other stuff. I am encouraged to keep thinking outside the box and to train my brain to go beyond barriers. And remember, my advice to you is do what you can. We can turn this life.